Hey Ho family, a very special Merry Christmas to you. Welcome to our second edition of Christmas with Hope. This is designed to be brief, but it's also designed to be meaningful for you and your family or loved ones to gather together and remember what matters most at Christmas time. So in lieu of not having a service on Christmas Day, we bring this to you as our gift, which we hope will be used in your family. It's going to include a couple of worship songs together, a short devotional in the Word, but helping us to reflect on Jesus Christ. So again, may it bless you and may it be used in your family. Again, very, very Merry Christmas to you.
on Christmas Day and snow is flung. When I feel I haven't had a friend since I was young. When I'm feeling tired of myself and everyone. Lord, remind me. Lord, remind me that the shepherds heard the angels break the silence in the field. That the wise men found a baby and they could not help but kneel. That the one who heard our weeping became a child in manger sleeping. Lord, remind me. Cause it's Christmas and I want to remember. I want to remember. When I hear the news and hear another war's begun, and I wonder if God's on the side of you. Christmas, and I want to remember. I want to remember. Glory in the highest glory, in the lowest glory that shines when nothing seems to shine at all. Again, Merry Christmas, Hope family. Um, really thankful to be able to do this together right now and trust that the Lord is gonna use it in uh, your life and mine as we just do a really a brief but meaningful summary of what Christmas means to us on this very, very special day. So we're gonna kind of learn about why is Christmas so merry? And for our Hope Church family, why is Christmas so filled with the power of hope as well. We're gonna use a text that is very dear to our church, Luke chapter two, the story of Simeon. Let me read some of the verses and then we'll jump in 
together. It says in Luke 2, verse 25, now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, he would not see death before he had seen, listen to this, before he'd seen the Lord's Christ, the Spirit of God working so powerfully in and around again the Christmas season. It says, and he came into the Spirit, into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, and this is one of the greatest parts, so awesome, he took him up in his arms and blessed God saying, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, why? For my my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Now there's a lot there. Let's unpack it briefly, but with great meaning and application for our lives on this very special Christmas day. What do we learn about our Savior, Jesus Christ? Here, well, number one, Jesus Christ came as peace. It's Simeon who's holding God the Son in his arms, which is absolutely astounding and amazing. He blesses God and he says in verse 29, he says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. We learn from verses 25 to 27 that Simeon was waiting and longing for, again, the appearing of the Messiah. He was a man led by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not die, as the text says, until he saw the Lord's Christ. Just, just again, place yourself in the text all throughout this, okay? Simeon, of all people, of all time, of all ages, all history, he was chosen with the honor of being prepared to hold the Son of God, the glory of God in his arms and to know who he's holding and to give God glory in that, in that moment as well. Just amazing. And what does he say? Simeon says, now I can depart in peace. Essentially what he says there, he says, Lord, now I can die. I can die. Very strong language, a very dramatic scene taking place here too. Again, as we live in the text, we think about, imagine you're a bystander in the temple right there and you look over to their side maybe and there's probably an elderly man. Again, this guy, maybe you don't know who he is and he picks up a child, looks up to heaven and says, now I can die. You'd be like, what's up with that guy, right? I'd probably say that too. What's up with that guy is that he's holding the son of God. He's holding the creator of the universe and he knows it. He knows who he's holding. That's why he is so excited. That's why he looks up to heaven. And that's why again, probably rushing with emotion in that moment that he has been asked and allowed to hold the very son of God in that incredible, meaningful, again, time. Amazing. Don't you love living the text? I do too. In verse 25, it says he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Let's remind ourselves, consolation means comfort. He was told he was waiting for the one who would bring comfort to God's people. Comfort in terms of the one who would rescue them from their sins. He was promised to see the one who would comfort them in the Lord's Christ, again, as the text says. So what a moment this must have been. Eh? Imagine the feelings of Simeon. How fast was his heart beating? It must have been pounding out of his chest, the adrenaline rushing through his body as well. And the first thing he says, now I can die according to your word. And of course, Simeon here, led by the Spirit of God, he uses the word peace. Now I can die, your servant is allowed to depart in peace. And why does he say that? Because he knows he's holding peace. I mean, I've said this many times already, but live in the text right now, loved ones. There he is, I'll use my Bible as Jesus, you know, at least it's the word of God, right? Anyway, point to the word of God. He's holding the Prince of Peace and he understands that this is the child that will bring peace between him sinful and God who is holy. The man Christ Jesus, the mediator, he knows he's holding the Prince of Peace. I mean, how would you feel? You and I would feel pretty outstandingly awesome. Of course, Jesus Christ being the Prince of Peace, this is why the angels, again, sang to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Christmas time is peace time, Jesus Christ being the Prince of peace. Simeon knows this. He's holding this child. He is holding the one again who will bring him peace with God. No longer enemies, no longer at enmity with God, but rather at peace with God. Jesus Christ came as peace. Simeon's holding the one. Peace in life, peace in spite of sin, over sin, peace even in death. Jesus Christ came as peace. Secondly, 
Jesus Christ came to be seen. If you look at verse 30 now, it says, for my eyes have seen your salvation. This is incredible. He praises God and declares that he is looking, listen carefully, he is looking at the salvation of God. Wow. The world defines salvation as being protected from harm. The Bible defines salvation as being saved from the power and penalty of sin. Simeon is holding this child, yet he sees salvation. Here's what's so critical, right? He says, my eyes have seen. Simeon had the eyes to see physically, but most important, he had the eyes to see spiritually. Again, live in the text again, right? He was in the temple, right? Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus in for the custom of that time. Lots of people around in the temple, lots of people there, lots of activity. But the difference is, is that Simeon could see spiritually because Simeon had eyes of faith. Without faith, what does Jesus become? Without faith, Jesus is a great man. Without faith, Jesus is just a moral teacher. Without faith, Jesus is just a powerful prophet. With faith, Jesus is the Son of God, the glory of God, the Lamb of God, the goodness of God, the Savior sent from God. With faith, Jesus is the Lord of the universe. With faith, Jesus is the Savior of the world. And this is what Simeon knows because he believes his eye can see a child physically, but his eyes and heart spiritually recognizes that this is Messiah. And that's why he responds with, my eyes have seen your salvation, man. And this is when Christmas time with faith changes everything. I remember the first Christmas with true faith. So I grew up again in the church and I believe there's a God. I didn't know Jesus Christ personally. The first Christmas I had with actual faith, I remember front row, I could see the church I'm in right now, the service, all of a sudden the songs popped, all of a sudden the stories became so real. I remember standing and singing and marveling at the wonder and the glory of the Savior Jesus Christ and eyes, there's tears filling my eyes, running down my cheeks at the light and the love and the power of Jesus Christ. That's what what faith does. You know, I wonder being a young man, early 20s that time, I wonder who's watching right now and you're sitting here, maybe you didn't want to, but here you are. And could this be the Christmas where you are filled with faith for the first time ever that you could join my story and sing Jesus Christ for who he is, not just a great teacher, the savior of the world to save you and I from our sins. Then you can join with Simeon and say, my eyes have seen your salvation. Jesus came as peace, he came to be seen, and lastly this, he came for you. Verse 31, it says, my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. The word I love so much there in verse 31 is prepared, that you have prepared. God is prepared, again, for his people. Now, Christmas time is a ton of preparation, isn't it? I mean, think about what today represents. Preparation in food, preparation in gifts, preparation in family activities, preparation all the events going on, tons of preparation. What did God prepare at Christmas? Here's what God prepared. He prepared his son. He prepared to send his son to save the world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Think about it. When Jesus Christ leaves perfect, eternal harmony with Father and the Holy Spirit, he leaves that to take on flesh, to become one of us. God prepared his son to come down again at that first Christmas out of love for you and me, that we might be saved from ourselves and death and sin and sorrow and Satan and receive everlasting life. Now that is the gift of Christmas. Here's what you and I know too, right? Today we get some gifts. Maybe you already have. Maybe you're about to be. What's the reality of those gifts? Some of them will last a few days. Most of them will last a few moments, right? That's what happens. They just don't last. We get bored. We need another earthly gift to try to satisfy our longings. But here's the gift of Jesus Christ. It lasts forever. He lasts forever. The eternal Son of God and eternal life found in Jesus Christ is eternal again at its gift. Truly, Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving day after day and month after month and year after year, decade after decade and eternity into eternity. Jesus Christ is ultimately the only gift that you and I need. Do you have the gift of Jesus Christ this Christmas? He came for you. 
He came for you and maybe he came right now for this moment where you are that you might truly receive the gift of life found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our opportunity today and his love, I pray, drenches you, drenches you in this moment with his mercy and grace and extreme generosity that he gives to us that you and I can know everlasting life. That's the gift of Christmas, salvation found in Jesus Christ. And Simeon knew it, and Simeon rejoiced in it, and Simeon prophesied this gift would not just be for the Jewish people as much as it is, but it would be for the Gentiles, that's mostly you and I right now, that we rejoice and say, yes, Lord, thank you for your kindness to us in this way that we may never die. Christ came to be seen, he came as peace, he came for you and for me, and right now, I pray again upon your heart, your family, wherever you are right now, I pray God's presence upon your life in such a special way this Christmas. Maybe you like me and just, just longing in this crazy, frantic, dark, chaotic world, the peace of Jesus Christ that rests upon us. Maybe we take a big spiritual breath today. Maybe after this little service is played, you will take some time to pray with your spouse or friend or family member. Maybe you'll take some time just to again, to acknowledge where would we be without Jesus Christ? We're so glad you joined us for this service with Hope Bible Church and the family that we seek to be. And we are praying a very special blessing upon you at this time. Hey, Hope family, from my heart to yours, from our family to yours, truly, truly, may you have a Merry Christmas. You are loved.